kind of got a short video here today. I'm just going to show you kind of a little jig type deal for flattening a big log. Now this works for me because I have two workbenches that are about three feet across. And I have these pallet boards, two of them. I got two of them. <clears throat> and all I gotta do is kind of just be screwed on the side. And my drill's not out here. Oh well. So anyway, I'm just gonna put these down. And we're gonna have a little bit of room in between here for the saw blade to run freely. I'm using a circular saw to flatten this, by the way. I did not say so before. Actually, because that's why I have this would work with a router, I would assume. And the hand drill. Favorite hammer. Oh, it's gone. oh no, there it is. I made the handle on this myself. It's gonna hit my thumb with a hammer. Shut a small tear. Oh. And be done with it. Let's see. Should have been a little more prepared for this. Helps if you clamp it down, especially when using a hand drill. Clamp this to the bench here. Gotta get this lined up parallel where I want it. The log's gonna go beneath it. You don't need no fancy power drill to get some work done. I probably don't live in the 20, not the 20, 18th century. Alright, then. Should get up with the times. Quite an enjoyable tool of it is actually. One screws really good because you got this leverage on it. This is called a bit brace, by the way. I call them cartoon drills because these are always the hand drills that the cartoon characters have. I'm just going to run one on each end. Finds it easier to start the screw if you tap them in. Don't worry, I have disposable tops on these so I don't feel bad about running screws in them. That's basically it. So this works with a router or circular saw. Actually, I think if you take this idea and like small, small it down, and you're like, I have to make one actually. But you can make like a saw where you can make repeated cuts. And have a circular saw. Almost like a chop saw. But not a chop saw, you know? Oh yeah, those are good and secure. Now, if you're using a circular saw, your log might have to be like set up on a stand type deal to adjust the height. You know? I have mine, I will have to. But when you set it up, you want the circular saw's maximum depth after it falls through the slot to be just a little bit after your final cut line. That way you can just work down to it. But, you know, I think this is, this is that whole video. Me screwing in two boards down and I'm losing hammers and hitting myself and using a hand drill.
These are actually really good tools. This one was my great grandfather's. So, very simple, very simple flattening jig. Just go right across here. It's not too much in the way. Now we'll just circular saw, tap the log over. Should work perfect. I might get a shot of one or two of those shots of me using it. Oh, I have to move everything around first. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, here's the thing. Here's the 170 pound log that I drive from my garage, which is a little ways over there, around the trailer, past the truck, up a, there's about a two foot drop there. Through across the floor, into here, and then I propped it up on four blocks. Just so I can flatten the top of it. Now you can see I got it set fairly high there. This is where it landed, which is more than enough for my circular side to cut through roughly. I got a rough flatten it. Here's where I want the final depth to be, just about. So, uh, after moving this log, I figured, hey, it's a pretty good thing that I can move these bars supporting the saw instead because this log is way too heavy to move. Like, way too heavy. And I got two extra blocks here so I can raise it up about an inch and a half each side as I go along. So, now I suppose I get going. Got a brand new battery in the saw. After all, why not start? If you have a chainsaw, just you can cut it straight. I didn't have a chainsaw, and I had to cut like uh, two, two, about two feet of material off. And it actually came off into like a, a Y type deal. And I literally had to chop it out with this tool. This one right here. Literally chopped most of it out. This I was able to cut with the circle saw. That's why it's kind of straight. But after this point, I wasn't working at all. And I had to chop like to literally about here. And it was about here on this side, where, right, because it broke to a Y in the middle. And then after that point, I was able to get a Zazal blade that was big enough to start kind of chopping that off. And I didn't just chop through this, well, I shouldn't say I just used this tool. I had a big metal wedge. And I think it's over there somewhere. Should be over there somewhere. Anywhere. And that hammer. <clears throat> so I hope y'all appreciate this video because I went through a lot of effort to get here. By the way, this is going to be a giant chest, log chest, made straight out of a log. I, make, I might do a video making a much, 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 much smaller one. So, time to maybe show you how it cuts. Okay, so on a wet log like this, you don't want to cut it full depth. So this is going to take a really, 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 really long time. I might have to do something about maybe <clears throat> bring it down to more of an edge there. But basically, how this works is I'll run my circular saw across there a couple of times. a bunch of these boobs in the top where I can then pop them out yeah like that pop all these out it's a little easier when you're not trying to fucking record it anyway 
And then I gotta do that to this whole dog. Which I'm thinking maybe I should get to work with this tool here again. Chop in, chop down, chop in, chop down. Till, you know, a little more close to depth. It's gonna take me a long time. So just a heads up, it might be a long time before I make my next video. Anyway, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want, you can like and subscribe. Otherwise, I truly don't care. Uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.